This is one of the best, if not the best, RC plane of 2021, the E-Flight Draco 2 meter wingspan. And today we take it for its maiden flight and share some tips at the end of the video that might just help save your plane from crashing. Come it up. Look how slow I'm bringing it in. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even going to do the approach, but I did it anyway. The E-Flight Draco 2 meter is a stunning RC plane with loads of features and some you may not have heard of. We covered all of these in our unboxing, build and overview video. We go into a lot of depth with all of these features, so if you haven't seen that, make sure you go and check it out. And we're going to share our initial thoughts on this plane later on in the video, but first, of course, we need to fly the plane, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. What an absolutely stunning day we have here in Canterbury, Christchurch. Here at the airfield for the first flight of the Draco. Yeah, that plane, man, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. I'm nervous. <laughs> Maiden flights always get me a little nervous. This one in particular, because this plane is just so beautiful, there's so much cool stuff going on. Transporting this plane, it's not too bad. I mean, it's an enormous plane, but the wings and everything goes together pretty quick, so not such, not such a, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Man, <laughs> this thing's just huge. One of the most crucial steps in your setup is don't forget to plug these in the wings. Otherwise, I think shortly after takeoff, you might realize, ooh, why is my wing falling off? Make sure to clean the windscreen. So the pilot can see. And so that our onboard footage looks nice and crispy. Remote on first. And we're using the Spectrum NX radio, which is the best radio for your RC planes and heaps of functionality. It can take a little while to get used to, but once you're used to it, it is very easy to use. We're gonna be running a 5100 milliamp LiPo battery, six cell. So what I like to do is I like to set my timers up as the name of the battery size, 5000 milliamp. So I know I got five minutes set. If I got a, like a bigger, like a 7000 milliamp, then I'd figure out the time for that and then I could adjust it. I don't forget when you're flying all kinds of different planes you always forget like I forgot my Spitfire the other day <laughs> luckily I'd saved the timer so I knew okay I was using a 5000 million boom straight away I knew the time but let's get this plane turned on throttle cutters on Here's plugged in look for the dance quick flight control check make sure everything's good praise the lord praise the lord about these covers that you can't see <laughs> my soldering job it was one of the worst soldering jobs of my life went out and bought like a $200 soldering iron and I still can't solder properly what's going on here I've watched all the YouTube tutorials I think I must be, I must be using some cheap kind of solder yeah. maybe that's what the issue is or use it era so we've got all kinds of cameras going on in here for you guys there's so much cool lightage going on uh, navigation lights strobe lights We've got beacon lights, we've got landing lights, we've got cockpit instrument lights. Can you see the cockpit instrument? It's such a bright time right now. You probably can't see these lights, but don't worry. We're gonna take this plane out again, fingers crossed, on a dimmer day, like a dusk, nighttime or morning. Check out these massive, beautiful flaps. Look at that. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps, and they are slotted flaps. What that means is there is a slot between the wing and the flap that allows airflow to get through that slot and that helps delay separation. It improves the slow flight capability, allows you to fly slower, increases the lift and all that good stuff. Throttle cuts off. Throttle cut off. Mm -hmm. Oh, they told you. Timer reset, yeah. So you got That's it all really set cool. for the audio. Look, so you got this, ready? Throttle cut on. Throttle cut off. Low rates. Oh. Mid rates. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. Take off See flaps. That? And then this one here. So that's throttle reverse, ready? So really cool. I, I highly, highly recommend. And a lot of people get these radios and they and they set them up cool and they fly it. But they don't set up the audio events, the audio focuses. They make a huge difference, especially when you got multiple planes flying different planes. Perhaps you got slightly different settings on the different planes. I try to keep them all sort of universal. Which knobs I'm using for flaps, for gear, for for flight mode. So really good idea to set up your audio events when you're setting up the radio. Right, that's enough procrastinating. My heart's racing a million miles per hour. Draco. Wind is zero two zero degrees, seven knots, runway zero two, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway zero two. Oh! Oh! oh <laughs> Look at it go! My lord. What a beautiful plane, and it is enormous! I'm in safe mode. Now, one thing you gotta be wary of, guys, this plane is so big. Oh, something's happening. That was not me. What was that? I'm bringing it around. Oh, it's doing that. It's doing it south. I'm turning a AS3X mode. I've turned the safe off. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, it's doing it again. Mid rates. I'm going the mid rates. Oh, it was banking it south. Do you see that? Yeah. That's not me, Amber. Not really. Oh, that's not me. Oh no, come on, man. That's not me. It's banking it left and right like that. Oh man, please don't, please don't crash on me. 
Not today. Okay, here we go. We're up a little bit high, I know, but man, look at it. It does say in the manual you need to fly it at 80% strain level for a few seconds to get AS3X uh, set up properly. Maybe that's what was going on before. So we're gonna bring it around, we're gonna level out, we're gonna get the throttle up. So we're at 100%, it's 100% holding it there for three seconds. Two, three, there we go. Look, it seems to sort its problem out, so maybe that was it. <laughs> so nice, it's so nice. So there is a uh, mix already um, set up with the plane out of the box and that's going to help prevent or reduce adverse yaw. It's gonna make your turns more coordinated, more balanced and more nice looking. And it's more comfortable for the passengers. Look at that. That's so cool. All right, this time we're gonna do it even, even slower. Bringing it back around. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun to do approaches with. Look at it. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that prop stops. The prop stops when you bring it all the way down. Here's a good Here we go. Gonna bring it real slow in this time. Look at that. So cool. <laughs> Look at the size of it. That's massive. Look how eh? slow I'm flying right now. Okay, be careful. I don't, I don't want to stall it. Let's go. Bring it around. This is with a slight tailwind. Throttle's up just about 10% now. I'm so scared the camera's gonna turn off when you come into land. I hope not. I'm gonna do another slow, low pass, and then I'll come in for the approach. 10, 9, Ooh, there's the count down. 8, 7, 6, Look at that. 4, 3, 2, Look how slow I'm bringing it in, look at that. Oh, oh, I wasn't even going to do the approach, but I did it anyway. Oh, what a beautiful looking plane. <laughs> that is way too much, but let's, let's check it taxiing. Look at that. I got full back stick just to be sure. And you know what? That was in mid rates too. Look at that propeller. Look at the suspension. That's so cool, man. This suspension is so cool. Oh my gosh, success. Success, though. How that do is you success. Feel? That I'm is, proud of I you. I feel amazing. <laughs> that. It's at max rates, look at that. Oh, it's vertical. Full vertical. Oh, Full power. Oh my god. All right, breathe it down. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, that's perfect. Look at it. Oh, you oh. got a flare in there. Yes, yeah, I got a flare in there. You see the suspension working? It's functioning, man. It is so cool. It is so cool. All right. And uh, Draco, you're clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff. Let's go straight into the vertical. Look at that, straight into the vertical. So much power on 6S. And we are in high rates, AS3X only. Safe is off. And I've not yet had to trim this plane. Really? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. No. So those slats will allow you to get at really high angles of attack really slow as well. All right, bring the flaps down. This time we should be able to get even slower. I didn't give myself a long enough run up. Do you do have to be careful getting really slow with full flaps, guys? Because it does can make the plane a little bit more unstable, but more prone to wing dropping. Look at that. You net? That? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna go around there. Flying around with our full flaps out. You're doing really well. So I can't remember, was I saying it earlier, but the plane is so big. So you need to be careful of your perspective if you're used to flying a plane like a T-28, it's like half the size. So you think where it, wherever it is, is it probably further away than it actually is, than what you think it is. Here we go, landing flaps. True. Bring the power up a little bit. When this pick up a little bit, ever so slightly. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what a awesome big plane. This is like the perfect, like if you want to get something massive, Get this one, man. Don't muck around. Get the Draco. It's the one you want. Let's do a touch and go. We're gonna bring it in here. And we're gonna go, that's flaps one. Go, landing flaps. Oh, you're going so slow. Look at that, touch Beautiful. and go, <laughs> straight up, <laughs> straight up. Take off flaps. Out of the flaps. Oh, we haven't done any arrows. No. It's about time we do something. Oh dear. Oh, there we go. There we go. Take off flaps. 
Landing. We're on landing flaps. Bring the power down. Then the plane come down, flying it down. Oh yeah, baby. Beautiful. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that, look at that. Oh, this plane is so good. Beautiful. So much fun out there for this beast maiden flight. But now Joe's gonna go into some things that he noticed during his first flight. The first thing I noticed was perspective. Now, when you're used to flying, let's say your E-Flight T28 1.1 meter wingspan, it's about half the size of the Straco, and you're flying it over your field, you start getting used to how it looks in the sky when it's flying over the edge of the field or when it's coming on your approach. You get used to that size. But when you suddenly level up to a plane that's twice as big, it's very easy for you to accidentally fly it further away than what you actually want it to be flying. And that's because, well, it's just so much bigger. So when it's up in the sky and you're going down that tree line or the edge of that paddock, it, the plane is actually going to be twice as big, even though you might be looking for it to be about the same size as that T28. Now, an example where this can be an issue is, well, I have a 1.6 meter wingspan Spitfire. Before that, I had much smaller planes around one meter wingspan. So when I leveled up the Spitfire, I didn't really think about perspective so much. So I got airborne and I was flying it around, which I, well, I thought I was flying over a paddock and I didn't set my timer and sure enough the plane eventually ran out of juice and I started to glide, on, glide in onto the field. Well, because my perspective was a bit messed up, I ended up gliding it straight into a tree because the plane was actually a lot further away than what I thought it was. So that is something to take into account when you're buying a bigger plane for your first time, it's gonna look a lot bigger, not only in person on the ground, but also when you're flying it in the air. The second thing I noticed was, well this plane just wants to fly. There's just so much lift by those huge wings and then you've got all those lift augmentation devices like your slats, slots, and your slotted flaps. So this plane just wants to fly in the air and it can be really hard to try and get it down to come into land. So what do you do? A lot of people, you're just gonna close the throttle, bring the power all the way down to get down. Now, this does have a problem though. When you turn off, or reduce your throttle, you're reducing the amount of slipstream, and that means that your elevator and your rudder aren't gonna be as effective on this particular model uh, of aircraft. So that means that when you try and flare with low power settings, this elevator, you might get to full deflection and you still don't have enough to flare the plane properly. And that's exactly what happened to me today when I was flying it around, sometimes I got a little bit high, brought the power off, came in, and then when I try to flare, didn't have that slipstream to make the elevator effective enough and so the plane didn't really flare as well as it should have. So really important that when you're coming in on your approach, make sure first off that you're coming in with flap, that means the plane's gonna be nice and draggy, which means you're able to bring up that power a bit and that means you're gonna have some slipstream over your control surfaces to make them more effective to make a better flare and a much nicer landing. <laughs> a little bit of something. <laughs> the third thing is reverse thrust. That's right, this plane has reverse thrust. It's got a fixed pit propeller blade, but it'll actually cause the motor to rotate in the opposite direction when you go into reverse thrust. Now this is great for reducing that landing distance, but only be using that when on the ground. Be very careful not to accidentally switch this into reverse thrust while in the air, because, well, just trust me, you don't want to even try that. So make sure that the plane is on the ground, you've touched down, and then you can flick it into reverse thrust and you can enjoy a much uh, shorter landing distance. So in conclusion, there are planes for speed, like jets. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Oh Holy my god! What? There are planes for maneuverability, like aerobatic planes and warbirds. Right, so this time, it might be the time. Ready? I am. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh. And there are planes for slow flight and super short takeoff and landings, and that is exactly where the Draco comes in. This is gonna be one of the most enjoyable RC planes that we own to date, and I cannot wait to get this plane back out there for some fun, and don't you worry, we're gonna be taking this out on a later day, maybe in the evening, so we can see those pretty lights working. And as always, guys, this is gonna be linked in the description box down below if you are interested, and if you did enjoy today's video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a like anyway. Make sure you're staying safe out there on your RC adventures. And a huge thank you to Verizon Hobby for sending us out this Draco 4 review. That is epic, and we're gonna be bringing a lot more videos of the Draco to the channel very soon. I'm Joe. I'm Amber. We're the RC Kiwis, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.